Let me switch up the game. I drink that cone. Yeah. Step back, cause I might put it on. Yeah. I go deep, so deep. Hey YouTubers, and thanks for joining me for another episode of Tom's Tube. I'm Tom, this is my tube, just in case you were wondering what Tom's Tube was. Today's episode is the Game of Thrones Season 6 Episode 8 Recap. And what an episode it was! Yes! 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 As you can see, everything's leading up to a nice big battle of the bastards up in the north. We've got a really messy looking trial for Cersei down in King's Landing. Things over in Braavos have come to a finale for Arya in one way or another. And Marine, well that's just turning into a pillar of fire really at the moment. So, you know, we'll have to see how that goes. Anyway, let's get on with the recap. Remember, spoilers, spoilers everywhere, so if you haven't seen the episode so far, get off, go watch the episode, come back, enjoy the recap, see how it works, and then after the recap I'll give you a little preview of what's to come next week, and it's good. Okay, I watched it earlier, it's really good. <laughs> anyway, let's get into it. Episode 8, titled No One, starts off with Lady Crane of the Bravosi acting troupe using some of the advice that Arya gave her to take a performance as Cersei to the next level. After the show, Arya seeks her out for medical attention following her run-in with the Waif at the end of the last episode. The lady is happy to oblige. After all, Arya did save her life from... Arya. <laughs> the Hound quickly tracks down the members of the Brotherhood that killed his friends and makes quick work of them with his axe. Over in Marine, Tyrion takes pride in his work as the city seems to have come back to life. He wishes Varys a fond goodbye as the spider is Westeros bound to start making allies for his new queen's impending arrival. But back in King's Landing, Kyburn informs Cersei that members of the Faith Militant have entered the Red Keep to fetch her. She has her mountain make gruesome work of one of them before sending the others packing. <laughs> this trial by combat, she's got it down. Mm -hmm. Brienne and Pod arrive at River Run to seek the Blackfish's help in Sansa and Jon's war for Winterfell. Brienne learns that the only way she can make good on her journey is to seek a momentary truce with Jaime and a surrender from the Blackfish on his behalf. Meanwhile, Bronn teaches Pod the basics in fighting dirty. Brienne speaks with the Blackfish, offering Jamie's terms of surrender in exchange for letting him and his soldiers travel north to Sansa's aid. Stubborn in his ways and ready to die to protect his home, the Blackfish tells Brienne sorry but not sorry forcing her to admit defeat on the matter. Cersei, along with the Mountain and Kyburn in tow, enters the throne room to witness her son shovel dirt in her face, metaphorically. Ooh, she is stuffed! Sorry, let me put that more eloquently. She's fucked, okay? She's absolutely fucked. So King Tommen has cancelled any trial by combat, so, you know, <laughs> there goes that theory. So she doesn't have a hope in hell, and she has no friends by her side, except for the Mountain, but she's gonna have to fight her way out of this. A Bren has a theory that maybe she will eventually have to get Matt of the Mountain to kill Tommen, and that's how Tommen will end up in his shrouds of gold. So, you know, I wonder if that'll go down in order to secure her own safety. But I digress. Tyrion and his alcoholism managed to finally win favour with Masande and Grey Worm, but just as a round of bad jokes seems to be putting everyone, including the audience, at ease, the brutal masters of Slaver's Bay make a surprise visit by sea in a violent attempt to take back Marine and Daenerys' now notable absence. After an open and honest yet threatening conversation between Jaime and prisoner Edmure Tully, Edmure wanders back into the castle and orders his men to lay down their arms and let the Freys and the Lannisters take control of Riverrun, much to the chagrin of his uncle, the Blackfish. Uncle Blackfish then sends Brienne and Pot on their way through a secret passage moat before rallying to fight his last fight in honour of his home and his family. Jamie sees Brienne escaping in the distance, but instead of sending men after her, gives her only a parting wave. No, oh, and no, nah, because now it looks like Jamie's officially gone bad. You know there was a time when he may have been good, may have been bad. He's bad. He's bad. As the Masters lay waste to Marine, Tyrion is forced to admit he could have handled things better, but just as it seems the Great Pyramid is under attack, in walks new pro dragon rider Daenerys, looking for someone's ass to feed to Drogon. She is not happy, okay? I saw an interview earlier from Amelia Clark, and she was explaining how it's like when the parents say, don't have a party to the kids, and then they go away, and then, you know, they come back, and the kids have had a party messed everything up, and it's kind of like this. 
Mama's not happy. The Hound runs into Beric Dondarrion and Thoros of Mir, as well as the rest of the Brotherhood, about to hang the other members who killed the last group of friends, as it goes against their ways. He convinces them to let him kill two of the three himself, then they all sit around and have a nice dinner together. No. Arya is still sleeping off her injuries at Lady Crane's house, but when the Waif attacks Lady Crane in a brutal fashion, Arya is forced on a parkour chase through Bravos to keep her would-be assassin at bay. But just when all seems grim for the young Stark, we find out that the Waif was to be the next life given to the Many-Faced God, and not Arya. As Jack and Hagar tells her she is finally no one, Arya rebuts and says she is someone. She is Arya Stark of Winterfell, and she's going home. <coughs> So what an episode, lining everything up for us. I know the past few episodes have been kind of slow and not so action-packed, and I'm a little bit annoyed at some of the unseen deaths of certain people, especially in this episode, like the Blackfish, the Waif, you know, certain characters that we've seen quite a few episodes on and the plot revolves around a bit. It would have been nice to actually see their final moments as opposed to just, you know, oh, he's dead. Oh, there's her face. But anyway, the rest of the episode was real quality. I like the way the actors are suddenly interwoven, uh, the characters, sorry, are now interweaving together and everything's coming to a head. You know, the next episode's gonna be pretty fantastic. But before I show you a preview, here are some quotable quotes. Ah, oh, I choose violence. Yes, she does. Yes, she chooses violence. All right, she got the mountain, man. He can peel off heads like he's peeling a grape. Awesome source, although, that all means nothing now, so, you know. Sorry, Cersei. You kinda had it coming. Next quotable quote. Anyone not drinking is disrespecting our queen. Ah, oh, Tyrion. He's the life of the party and everyone loves him. And even if, like Missandei and Grey Worm, you try not to love him, he'll make you love him because he's just lovable. I love you, Tyrion. You hear that, Peter Dinklage? I love you. He's the life of the party, no matter where he goes, and he tries so hard. Are we ready to see the preview of the Battle of the Bastards, the big episode nine for season six? <gasps> Battles have been won against greater odds. I fought beyond the wall against worse than Ramsay Bolt. You don't know him. Thousands of men don't need to die. Only one of us. Excuse me, I need a tissue. Okay, that was probably poor taste, but seriously, come on. You know this episode is gonna be the equivalent of a visual orgasm. Just <laughs> Okay. Anyway, that's it, Tom's Tubers, for today's episode, an episode eight recap of Game of Thrones season six. Hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you comment in the comment section below. Make sure you subscribe, some likes, anything. You know, say hi, I'm all good, I'm easy. I'll take whatever you got, anything. If you like the background theme for today's episode, check out Nicholas Yee's cello cover of the Game of Thrones theme. I'll put the link for that video in the description, so check out Nicholas's page and show him some love. Also, I'll put the link in there for episode 9 preview as well, so go over and check it out again if you want. But wait! There's more. Because next week is the big episode nine, which we know is always an epic episode for the Game of Thrones season, I'm going to do a group reaction video with my other housemates, Farah and Roman. So check that out for a special video release of Tom's Tube for that week. I'll also be doing the same for episode 10, so hopefully that'll be a bit of fun. Anyway, Tom's Tubers, that's the end of this episode. Hope you enjoyed yourself. If you didn't, stay tuned and you might enjoy the next one. Remember, eight of the folks. Please tell your folks. Hey. Bye. Let me switch up the game. I drink that cone. Step back cause I might put it on. Y